Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session today, uh, bringing our, the archives to you, finding digital access and research opportunities in archives and special collections. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen so you can see our lovely first slide. And um, today's session is just going to be somewhat uh, touching on a couple of different uh, opportunities to uh, to research not only in our collection but potentially find other things as well in other collections outside of uh, Penfield Library and um, you know we'll, we'll go into depth into some of the uh, the systems uh, some of the platforms um, that are used and if there are any questions please feel free to either enter them into the chat or uh, to, to save them for the end we, we hope to leave some time for, for questions uh, so first um, just want to introduce ourselves. Uh, I'll introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Zachary Vickery. I am the College Archivist Librarian uh, here at uh, Penfield Library. And good morning. I'm Catherine Jones Masson. I'm the Special Collections and System Librarian. And so, um, the first uh, thing that we'll we'll talk about today, I'll hand it off to Catherine, and it will be discussing uh, the New York Heritage Digital Collections. Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Um, so the New York Heritage Digital Collection, it's obviously a collection of digital materials. Um, it's from archives, libraries, and museums across the entire state of New York, um, therefore New York Heritage. Um, it talks about the people, the places, and the institutions, and collections include um, things like yearbooks, diaries, photographs, letters, pretty much anything that has to do with New York State that they can digitize, and they put it up. So it's pretty cool. It's a free resource and it's growing. Um, we're adding things to it and others across the state are too. Um, so until 2018, SUNY Oswego only had our yearbooks available. So that was the only thing we had up until really recently. Um, and then we were awarded a grant in 2018 and purchased um, equipment to do some digitization. So the collection we decided to digitize was the Millard Fillmore papers. And that covers 1817 to 1876 and contains over 9,000 items. So it's a pretty big um, collection. Um, and I'm gonna have Zach click on an example and take you in. So currently, um, this is just gonna be one, exa one example, but st the statistics we just looked at, there's about 4,000 pages that we've loaded so far, um, which sounds like a lot, but we're it only covers the years 1817 to 1836. So we have a ways to go. Um, so this is just one example. Um, and as you can see, Zach opened this and then kind of you can make it bigger so that you have a little um, easier chance of reading it. Um, yeah, there you go. Whoa, and you can get, you can go crazy. You can make it really, really big. Um, so that's really um, a positive part of it. Um, this is one that's pretty easy to read. So they're not all this easy to read. Um, so if you don't think this is easy to read, then there's a lot more that are, that are you know, sideways and you're trying to understand what they're even um, putting down. So um, just some information about this letter. So this was a letter um, from William, Her William Henry Harrison written in 1836. You can see the date at the top. Um, he becomes the ninth president of the United States in 1841. Um, some people were writing, you know, he's writing to have the honor um, to acknowledge the receipt of your communication. It's just interesting sometimes to see the way that they spoke at that time. Um, and so um, some things about some other people, I can just name drop a few um, other people that we find in this collection. So we're seeing people like William Henry Harrison, as you see here, um, Henry Clay, Seward, Nathan Kelsey Hall, Dorothea Dix, um, Thurlow Weed, and there's lots of letters that are between um, family members. Um, yeah, I like this one too. He says he was a child of the of the I mean the revolution um, in this. So it's kind of it's kind of a cool letter where he's talking about um, for him in 1836, it's it's only been 60 years since the Declaration of Independence. So it's interesting to hear them write about this time period. Um, but I don't want to take up too much time with us because we've got some other things to show you as well. So this is just one tiny thing. You can go in and browse. You can search these, these documents pretty easily. Um, 
um, from SUNY Oswego. And there's a search features you can kind of see at the top, there's a search box. So you could put in different searches, you could put in different words, and it will um, bring up the different letters that we have so far. Um, so some next steps, obviously we're continuing to add, so we're constantly adding more to this. So you'll see it over time that more show up in there. And the other project we're um, working on, but is a little bit slower, is transcribing these letters. Because obviously it's sometimes harder to read them. So, um, and to make them more accessible to people, a lot of the students don't read handwriting. So coming in and trying to look at these, there's already a, a difficulty with getting access to them. So um, just a, a project we're working on, it's pretty big. Um, it's gonna take probably another year at least to get it all in there, so. That is a good question. I see Lynn has answered, asked a question about can students volunteer to transcribe. Um, at this time, we were having some staff in the library during the COVID time do some um, transcribing and have some of our student workers do it. Um, they will tell you, I think some of them are here, <laughs> that it was a little difficult to try to transcribe them. They did it, but it was a tough thing. But it's definitely something we're thinking about, a way to have this collection and have students let me just come in and do some transcribing for us. So it's definitely in our list of things to do. Um, yes, that would be even better as a part of a class assignment. So I'm gonna pass this over to Zach so he can go on to the next um, part of this. Okay, um, so another uh, way that we're trying to bring the collection uh, to, uh, to researchers, to students, to faculty is um, through something called the Empire Archival Discovery Cooperative. Now, this is a source of information about archival collections that are held in cultural heritage organizations across New York State. Uh, SUMI Oswego started participating in the cooperative this past year by creating and publishing electronic finding aids for collections at Penfield Library. So as of today, we have 63 published finding aids that cover both the college archives and local history collection. Um, and I'll bring this up. So. Um, you can somewhat see as well with the Empire Discovery Cooperative. Uh, there is a way that you can search and browse uh, through the different uh, collections um, through the participating organizations. Uh, so some things to, uh, to be aware of with the Empire ADC and electronic finding aids. So these finding aids do not contain digitized items for collections it represents. So if you find something in there, it'll, it pretty much just provides an overview of what's in the collection. It doesn't actually provide anything uh, from the collection. Um, finding aids contain information about each collection, including location of the collection, an abstract of the collection, and scope and content of the collection, and also uh, have the ability to add subject keywords to it as well. So uh, if you do find something in there um, that is of a, a, a of note that would be something you want to search further into, um, there's the ability to click on just like in a library catalog and see more uh, items that, or collections that have a similar subject keyword. Um, and then Empire uh, Archival Discovery Cooperative, uh, they also have a search function that allows you to perform uh, a keyword search through hundreds of electronic finding aids. So for example, uh, if we're here on the search and you type in, if we just type in Oswego, uh, you'll actually see that there are 110 collections uh, that are across the state that are in this uh, in this uh, in Empire ADC. Uh, mostly they're going to be from us here at SUNY Oswego. Like I said, we have 63. Not all of the collections may have an Oswego tag, um, but the majority of them will be from SUNY Oswego. There are going to be some that are from other places as well, um, which I can provide an example. Uh, as we kind of sort of also highlight some of the collections with electronic finding aids that are here. Um, one of them are, uh, we have a, we started to work on the college presidents and have them uh, to all of the, uh, all the information that we have uh, in the collections about the college presidents are there. So uh, we have all of them except for um, uh, President Sheldon. Uh, but we have uh, Isaac Poucher and Stephen Weber. We'll have Sheldon in there. It's just that it's a much larger collection and we wanna make sure that that's all complete before we publish it and put it online. But starting from uh, uh, President Poucher uh, all the way through uh, President Weber, uh, those are all in there. Um, and then uh, we, we also have uh, faculty papers. We're adding those in so that you can uh, search through and see the different faculty collections uh, that are in the college archives. There's also scrapbook and diary collections from local Oswegonians from the 19th and 20th century. 
Uh, there's collections such as the Women's Christian Temperance Union collection that covered the periods of 1940 to 1977. There's the Save Our Shores paper collection that was uh, here in Oswego from 1974 to 76. There's the Leon Brown match collection, which is kind of an interesting one to find out um, where a gentleman locally uh, as, as a hobby collected uh, everything that he wanted to, that he could find about matchbooks uh, because of the diamond match company. And he worked there here in Oswego. And then there's the Dr. Mary Walker collection that we've included as well. So for example, if we type in Mary Walker, there's actually three collections throughout the uh, state that have added finding aids for uh, that have something to do with Dr. Mary Walker. Um, and you can see these two, they should hopefully contain something that has Mary Walker in there somewhere. But in ours, um, as we open one up, this will be the standard format for every single finding aid that is in Empire ADC. And it'll let you know of the size of the collection. It's one linear foot. Um, it gives you an abstract of what the collection is about uh, here at SUNY Oswego. Uh, some collection details, some historical notes about the person, and then scope and content, uh, which are notes that are going to, you know, really discuss more about what what the collection contains, not just uh, information, but also is it uh, papers? Is it um, are there objects in there as well? Uh, any sort of things that uh, researchers may be interested in. So feel free to look through Empire ADC so that you can kind of know more of, of what's uh, here in Archives and Special Collections. And also, if um, if you find anything that is of interest that you want to use in a class, or if you are researching on your own, contact us and we can uh, you know, figure out ways to provide access to you during this time or when we're back available or back open for for public um, visitation. And then finally, just as a uh, somewhat of a reminder, uh, there's also uh, lots of things to be found in Oswego DL. So if you're not aware of it, Oswego DL or the Oswego Digital Library, it's a place where you can find digitized and born digital items that are related to SUNY Oswego and uh, local history. Many of the digitized items in SUNY or in Oswego DL are in a physical format that are located in archives and special collections. So if there's something that you find in Oswego DL that you have questions about or require further assistance, uh, like if you're looking for a higher quality scan, please contact us and we can uh, work on providing that to you. Some things that of highlight and of note uh, that, uh, that recently have been added into Oswego DL uh, quest, the, I'll pull this up here, hopefully. Uh, there's a space in Oswego DL, uh, that we, that was created for quest. And last year when it moved to a virtual format, it became a, a uh, the place where student presentations and, uh, their, uh, their accompanying documents were added into. And so you can search through and we will continue to uh, suggest that students provide their their presentations, their documents uh, from their quest presentations into uh, this uh, this area. And uh, just to provide an example, there's there's some historic ones that are in here as well that'll that'll go back a, a number of years, but it is searchable, and uh, students can upload videos of their presentations. They can upload uh, their slides if they have, uh, you know, if they made PowerPoints or Google Slides, they can take that and, uh, d and deposit that in there as well. Uh, if they have papers, they can deposit papers in there. And it provides them as well with a, not only ways that you can uh, read it online, but also it does provide a permanent link for that item as well. So it could be uh, incorporated into somewhere else um, research-wise. All right. And then another thing that I do want to show with Oswego DL is that it's also a place where uh, student publications are found. So for example, uh, the the Great Lake Review from fall 2020, we have a, a we, we provide them with a space to, to keep historical uh, copies of the Great Lake Review in there. And so um, 
you can you can use this as well for examples for students if they're looking for creative projects if they're looking uh, to see what other students have done in the past uh, there's artwork in here there's uh, poetry um, there's a, a number of things that that can be researched that continue to live on in one central location uh, for for either uh, student uh, use or classroom use or or anything else so I will stop sharing my screen and got a couple minutes so if there are questions uh, I know that there have been some that have been entered into the chat uh, or if anyone has anything that they want to you know discuss uh, things that they found um, you know please let us know and we will um, try to provide some additional insight so um, I have a question Sure. Do you work with um, also like the Maritime Museum, any of those archiving or um, you know the historic areas in Oswego, maybe Cayuga County, some of those uh, smaller towns uh, collecting their history pieces and archiving? At Did this time, uh, this is Catherine. Yeah, at this time, um, we're not actively seeking um, new items um, for any of those areas. We do receive some sometimes, but um, we're not actively reaching out and, and searching for them or trying to get them like the historical societies or like the, the historians from the different, like from the maritime. Um, we do work with them. Um, talk to them actually this week so you know it's like we're in pretty close contact they ask us questions and we kind of go back and forth so there is a definite connection between them more so Oswego County um, than Cuyahoga County or um, Onondaga but, yeah. yeah and and I know that you know, I've, I've spoken with the people at the Oswego County Historical Society, trying to encourage them to also uh, participate in the Empire ADC so that there's more, uh, you know, uh, places for people to find out what's in their collection because they kind of have a similar situation with us where um, we kind of have internally, we know what we have, but there isn't an opportunity, as much an opportunity for uh, others to find out what's in collections as well. So we're, enc we're encouraging our, our local community organizations to participate as well. Um, okay. I that's why, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say that's why I added to the chat. Um, I do, sorry, I got to do some bragging rights. My daughter just got certified as an archivist through uh, U of Albany, and she, her present she found this wonderful collection in a maritime house in the Hudson Valley, and it makes reference to here. But it was like, how do we get this? Um, outside information that could affect because of the Great Lake and because Oswego mm -hmm. being a port, get that information to um, in our archives. So I was just curious. Yes, hi, Lynn. Hi, I um, just had a thought. Um, I was I posted in the chat about uh, perhaps transcribing documents and having students transcribe them. Um, I've had students try to transcribe letters, um, particularly from Hideo Takamine, and they just complained bitterly about the, the, the writing. And I'm like, I study medieval documents. This is easy, <laughs> right? So, um, but on the other hand, um, I'm wondering not just about using this as a class assignment, but also I can totally see this being used as a digital internship for a student. Um, and, this would be such a great opportunity because um, at least in history, we're seeing an increase in students who are interested in doing archive work um, or doing um, getting a, a master's in librarian um, in uh, an MLS. Um, and I think this would just be such a great opportunity for them. Plus it would en enable students who don't have access, who are perhaps um, commuter students or who don't have full-time access to campus resources, they could do this online. Um, and that's just such a great, you know, that would be such a great way to, it would great way to use the resources and get some assistance w as well. And I think some faculty would be, I would definitely be interested in mentoring students who want to do that. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I, I hoping that, you know, uh, building off of the the Fillmore project and um, as we move to other projects as well, other collections, um, we're hoping that we can kind of find a way that we can use, you know, the same thing for everything going forward. And uh, one of the things that we do want to uh, look into is, you know, like crowdsource transcription, a, a place where everyone can, can work on it at any time that they want to. Um, you know, they don't have to be... Uh, they don't have to be bound by the location, you know, they don't have to come to the library to do it, or they don't have to have only access to a particular drive that, you know, um, that you have to sign up for. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely explore those options. Um, any other questions? Um, feel free to, to reach out to us. Uh, we are uh, you know, when the spring semester is around, we, we are in the building uh, every day. So if there is something that you find or if you have questions about, we can, uh, we can pull something, we can look for it, we can, you know, try to provide a copy for you uh, or, or provide extra information about it. So feel free to do so to reach out to us. Um, and I did, uh, in the chat line, I did just kind of provide uh, the link that in our policies page, it provides some information about uh, how to cite materials, especially online digital materials that are in, that we have in, in archives and special collections. So, um, yeah. So I, I do wanna, you know, thank everyone for coming today. Um, I'm encouraged by <laughs> the people that are interested in seeing, you know, what, what we can help and what we can uh, provide and what we do already provide uh, here in archives and special collections at Penfield Library. And um, thank you, have a great day. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Newberry Library. OK, I'm writing down her note. <laughs> all right. I, uh, I think we're all I, done. But yeah, is he going to come back? <laughs> I think if we leave, John will will. John stop will do it. his automatically do his thing? OK. Yeah. All, all right. right. Great. Thanks. Thank yeah. you, Catherine. Bye. <laughs> Bye.